This is an ABC News special report. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Terry Moran here at ABC News Washington Bureau, and we're coming into your programming because of a major political announcement. Joe Biden has made his pick. The former vice president and presumptive nominee of the Democratic Party has chosen Kamala Harris, California senator and a former rival for the Democratic Party nomination, to run with him against President Trump and Mike Pence. Uh, the two have uh, a, a long history together, uh, and Kamala Harris also has demonstrated that she can fight, in particular against Joe Biden. She is 55 years old. She was elected to the Senate in 2016, and now stands on the edge of a major, major move in, in her life and in the nation's life. She's a historic choice. The first black American, the first uh, American of Indian descent to be named to a major party ticket. And I'd like to go to Mary Bruce, who's our senior political reporter, been covering all this for, uh, for us. Mary, uh, you have covered her in the Senate. Uh, this is a major moment for the country and, of course, for Kamala Harris. What do you make of this pick by Joe Biden? It is, of course, an historic pick. As you mentioned, she is the first black woman to be on the ticket, the first Indian American. Kamala Harris is no stranger, though, to making history. And we are getting a sense from Joe Biden himself as to why he chose her, saying in a statement, I need someone working alongside me who is smart, tough, and ready to lead. Biden says Kamala is that person. He goes on to say, I need someone who understands the pain that so many people in our nation are suffering. He says Kamala understands that. He says, I need someone who understands that we are in a battle for the soul of this nation. He says she gets that too. He also notes that he is choosing her because of her record of accomplishment, that she has fought tooth and nail for what is right. And he says, that is why I am choosing her. As you mentioned, they were former rivals not that long ago. Kamala Harris, of course, uh, took Biden to task uh, for his record uh, working with segregationist senators to oppose uh, school busing policies in the 1970s. It was an attack at the time that Biden's wife, Dr. Jill Biden, described as a punch to the gut. Clearly, that is water under the bridge. Uh, it is obvious that, that, that Biden feels that she is the right choice. And, and we do know that Biden has said all along that he was looking for someone to be his Joe Biden, someone who he could have a relationship with like he had with former President Obama. In many ways, this was a decision that was always going to come down to temperament, to personal relationship, to a gut feeling uh, on the half uh, of Joe Biden. He also notes uh, in making this announcement that, that Kamala Harris had a relationship with Biden's son, Bo Biden, who he lost uh, tragically to cancer several years ago. They worked together as uh, state attorneys general, and, and it's something that has always been a part of their relationship, their history, something that Biden and, and Senator Harris have spoken of often. Uh, and the historic nature of this pick, I think, is something that, that really cannot be understated. Joe Biden was the first uh, presidential presumptive nominee to say that he was only going to choose from women. And now in choosing a, a black woman, once again, uh, sending such a powerful message about representation, about the role of black women in the Democratic Party and the future of black women in the Democratic Party as well. Terry. Mary, thank you very much. Kamala Harris is only the second black woman to serve in the United States Senate. Uh, George Stephanopoulos is with us. George, in some ways, Kamala Harris is the most traditional pick on the list of candidates that Joe Biden was looking at. The United States senator has run for the presidency, has a national profile, but she is something new, really, on the national ticket. And I think this process for Joe Biden probably ended up pretty much where it began. Coming out of the primaries, as Mary pointed out, he said he was going to pick a woman. Uh, it, it became fairly clear after all the racial unrest across the country this summer that there would be more pressure that that woman be a black woman. And the, the big question for Joe Biden all through this process, as he went through the interviews, as he went through the vetting, was could he get comfortable with Kamala Harris? Uh, as Mary said, when she took off on him in that debate, Last summer, it was a gut punch to Biden. It was a gut punch to Jill Biden, Dr. Jill Biden, uh, Joe Biden's wife, who were, were kind of shocked that she went there, given the relationship she had had with Bo Biden. And then the question for Joe Biden through this process was going to be, can I trust her? Will she be a partner in the Oval Office? Will I have to be watching my back or will I have someone who's going to be watching my back uh, as, as vice president? And clearly, over the course of this process, he ended up getting comfortable enough to say, she's going to be my pick. And you talk about historic choices, uh, Terry, uh, as the first black woman on a ticket. She's also in such a uh, 
she becomes the instant future of the Democratic Party, especially if Joe Biden wins in November. Um, you know, you saw Joe Biden and, and Bernie Sanders were the front runners for the Democratic nomination this time around, both 77 and 78 years old. Kamala Harris is from a different generation. She instantly becomes the leader of that generation of Democrats. And uh, the presumptive uh, vice presidential nominee, George, thanks for that. Uh, she is also uh, the first member of her family to be born in the United States. Both par of her parents were immigrants, uh, and that is significant as well. I want to go to Rahm Emanuel, uh, former chief of staff to President Obama, former mayor of Chicago, uh, and former member of Congress. And Rahm, as you look at this, what does she bring to the ticket for Joe Biden? Well, uh, well first of all, let me, I would like to make two side points away. One is Joe Biden's staff showed incredible discipline in this process loyalty to the principal, not leaking it, that speaks volume for the White House in the future. Compare that to the President Trump, whose his staff is leaking on him like a sieve all the time. You need a disciplined, loyal staff, and I think his staff right now show that. That is a revealing part of this process. Two, I think they've played this incredibly well politically in the sense of having suspense all the way, dominating now the rest of the news through the evening and tomorrow morning. And while she's obviously the first uh, person of color on a ticket, you know, one of the fastest growing voting groups for Democrats are people from Asia. Her descent is Indian, and that is going to play a major role in also solidifying a new fast growing constituency in the American public. And I think her background as a prosecutor, attorney general, when you look at so much of the consumer reforms, type of political protections, environmental protections, tobacco, protections on tobacco, et cetera, that comes out of that office. And I think when we all think about the gravity of politics of Washington, her political experience, her real bones were cut in local politics, not national politics. She's actually new to national politics. She has rooted in a progressive politics that is local and homegrown. And I think that will pay a huge dividend to the Biden administration so they never lose contact with what's going on in the rest of the country, and obviously California being not a, a big, big player in our national, not only national politics, where trends start are in California, both culturally and politically. Hmm. Rom, thanks very much. It was a rising star in California, the district attorney in San Francisco and the state attorney general. I'd like to go to Yvette Simpson now. I uh, was the chief executive for Democracy for America, a progressive democratic organization. What's your take from, from your wing, if I may, of the Democratic Party? Ka uh, Kamala Harris has had taken some flack for some of her choices as prosecutor and attorney general. What do you make of this pick? You know, a couple things. One, I think I want to take a moment to acknowledge the historic nature of this. You know, people don't always give progressives credit, but we do support racial and social justice. And the fact that he picked a black woman, an Indian American woman, uh, to be his running mate is a big deal. And progressives are going to have to acknowledge that that's a major win for our country, particularly at a time like this when progressives are fighting right now uh, for equality. I think the second thing is what we want to do is we want to win. And the reality is, is if you can't have an Elizabeth Warren, which we expect it might not happen, one, because, you know, we weren't sure whether the politics would match with Joe Biden and whether the people around him would allow that. But also, she's a white woman. And that at this time, there was a huge demand that there be a, a woman of color, certainly a black woman, considering what's going on in our country. And so I would say that if you had to choose someone that was not a progressive, but was a black woman, uh, Kamala Harris was probably going to be the first choice. And I think she does have her roots. Uh, in progressive politics. She was uh, an endorsed candidate by Democracy for America when she ran for Senate years ago. Uh, certainly, her criminal justice background has been a challenge. Um, but in recent weeks, she has been one of the most outspoken people for justice for Breonna Taylor and um, George Floyd. She has been out there talking about uh, what we need to do to reform our police department. And so if you had to pick someone who knows the police department and hopefully has a commitment to make sure that we restructure and reform our police department, I think she'd be a good choice. All in all, I think the choice was probably because we need someone who's going to compliment Joe Biden. She is tough. She is strong. She is smart. She is ready on day one. And everybody is ready for that debate with her and Vice President Pence.
Vice President Pence, because we know that that will be quite a, quite a, a brawl, because we know that Kamala Harris can bring it. So all in all, progressives didn't get our very first choice. We probably didn't get our second choice, but I think it is an important point to make uh, that now we are making history with the first black woman, the first Indian American uh, woman to be on the ticket. A uh, historic choice, Yvette. Thanks very much, uh, Yvette, saying she can bring it uh, on the campaign trail. Joe Biden certainly found out about that in, one, in the debate where Kamala Harris famously tagged him for his support in the 1970s for busing. I'd like to bring in Zareen Shaw, our colleague at ABC News, who's really been covering uh, Kamala Harris for a long time, for a year or so. So from, from that perspective, from that on-the-ground perspective, traveling with her, covering her, a couple of things. What kind of a candidate is she? You know, Joe Biden's a very familiar figure. She, uh, Kamala Harris, did run for president. But what, is, what does she bring on the campaign trail? And just what's she like? You've hung around with her, with her quite a bit over the past year. Hi, Terry. You know, it was a historic campaign, and this is a historic pick for just the third time in history. A woman selected for the job for the very first time, a woman of color. You know, Biden said he was not basing his decision on any one thing. He said he was looking at a variety of factors, including if he thought the person could be president one day and if they were simpatico with his views of the world. Clearly, we know now that person is Kamala Harris. And of course, Joe Biden turning a former rival, Senator Kamala Harris, into his running mate. You remember that first debate. She went after him for his uh, stance on, on busing from decades ago. Um, and of course, now she, has in, she endorsed him several months ago. She is now his running mate. Rumors have been building for weeks. Just two weeks ago, an image of Biden's notes with talking points about her went viral. That very first point he wrote, do not hold grudges. Now, you remember that first debate when she went after him forcefully for his opposition to federally mandated busing from decades ago. She eventually endorsed Biden several months after she dropped out, virtually campaigning for him, raising millions for him the last few months. Speculation of Harris. Uh, began ramping up as the country began grappling with the debate over social change. The senator, she is of black and Indian descent. If she is elected, she will be the first woman and Asian person to serve in one of the country's two top spots and the very first black person to serve as second in command. Now, she is no stranger to historic milestones. She was also the first black and first woman to serve as California's attorney general. That is a role that introduced her to the Biden family through Biden's late son, Beau. Terry? All right, Shereen, thanks very much for that. This is a historic pick. A little bit of, of biography. I, I mentioned that uh, her mother uh, immigrated from India, is a scientist. Her dad, an economist, uh, immigrated from Jamaica. And so she is uh, what they call a second generation American, as so many of us uh, have been. Uh, she w attended Howard University, the great historically black institution of higher learning here in Washington, D.C., got her law degree at the Hastings School of Law at the University of California. Uh, and I'd like to go now to John Carl uh, on the, the Kamala Harris pick. John, you've, you've, you've watched her in Congress on the campaign trail. What does she bring to Biden uh, that Biden needs, do you think? Well, I think Yvette hit on something important, the question of ready on day one. Joe Biden is 77. He will be 78 uh, on uh, when, when he is sworn in if he wins in November. That is by far the oldest president, uh, newly elected president we have ever had, uh, which will raise questions about uh, what, what is, you know, often the most important question is, can the vice president step in and serve as president? As uh, John McCain used to joke, uh, the, the, the job of the vice president is to inquire daily on to, as to the health of the president. Uh, but in this case, with Kamala Harris, you have somebody uh, who brings a really serious resume, Terry. I mean, she was the district attorney for six years in San Francisco. She was the attorney general for the, for the state of California and uh, now senator from California. That means that she has a serious experience, political experience, experience in law enforcement. Uh, she's shown that she can get elected twice in the most populate, populous state uh, in the union. Uh, it's, uh, you know, Biden clearly went with somebody who he believes has the experience and the standing to go in there and do the ultimate job if, uh, if she is called on and if she needs to, to step in to be president. All right, John, thanks very much. I want to go back once more to Mary Bruce on what happens next. The, the pick, the ticket is there. What are they going to do? 
Well, now we're, we know we will be hearing from them tomorrow. For the first time, we will see Joe Biden uh, delivering remarks side by side with Kamala Harris, his pick for VP. We are, uh, it will be the first time that we will hear from Senator Harris in, in, in a little while. You know, unlike so many of the others, uh, potential finalists and potential contenders here. Harris has been very tight-lipped. Unlike others who are actually actively campaigning for this role, she really uh, laid very low throughout this entire process. We are now getting uh, some initial reaction from those close to her, saying they are so proud, very emotional, and adding, now on to the hard part. Terry. On, on to the hard part, on to the race. And uh, Rachel Scott is with us as well, our colleague covering the White House and politics. We've been out on the campaign trail. Uh, as you look forward to what this Democratic ticket now, Biden-Harris, is going to look like and what they're going to accomplish, uh, what are you expecting? What do you see with Kamala Harris on the ticket? Well, you know, there was so much pressure on Biden, Terry, to pick not only a woman of color, but a black woman as racial unrest continues to rock this nation. And James Clyburn, who helped propel uh, Biden's uh, campaign to victory in South Carolina and in the primary, came out very early on and said he believed that an African-American woman needed to be on the ticket. And that is something that I have heard from other party leaders and even voters um, in this Democratic process. And so today, history is made. And, you know, I was at, uh, I was at Senator Harris's announcement in Oakland. I when she announced her bid for presidency and she said she was running to confront the toxic politics that she believes is pushed by President Trump. Now she will have a chance to do that as the running mate to Joe Biden. Terry, history is made today. Absolutely. Thank you, Rachel. And as Rachel said, this year, this year 2020, with the, when the killing of George Floyd triggered that uh, anger and anguish and a national reckoning on race that continues, Joe Biden's choice of Senator Kamala Harris as his vice presidential pick ensures that that will be right at the center of the debate, in the debate, that vice presidential debate to come between Kamala Harris and Mike Pence. So once again, Joe Biden picks Senator Kamala Harris as his vice presidential nominee. Uh, they will be confirmed as the nominees next week in this virtual Zoom uh, convention that they're planning. There'll be much more on this and on all the politics stories on World News Tonight with David Muir and on the ABC News Live streaming channel. Check in with that. I'm Terry Moran here uh, in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching. This has been a special report from ABC News. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.